Are you confused about understanding your biotype using the Silhouettes and Kiwi system? I'm presenting a two-part series using Silhouettes in conjunction with Kiwi body system so you know how to dress for your body type. Simply put, if you think about Silhouettes as a system designers use to dress for your body proportions, Stylists are using the Kiwi system to personalize your style based on your actual body. In the first part, I will explain the design elements used in each of the 12 silhouettes and which brand and designers are using the 12 silhouettes to design around their brand. Follow along with this chart in the order I'm presenting the 12 silhouettes. Also subscribe if you want to learn more about how to develop your personal style. Hit the like button if you have found your silhouette. Now let's get into the video. We're starting off with the hourglass shape. Here are the key elements of the shape. Slightly round shoulders, bust and hips are the same width, small and well-defined waist, natural waist position neither high or low, bottom and the hips are well-rounded, bigger thighs tapering downwards. Typically, the weight gain is evenly distributed throughout the body. Going with the category of tops, Here's two key design details to look out for. Notice the tops accentuate the hourglass shape with open necklines and slim fitting sleeves. Here are some examples of open necklines. These are the best sleeve design details for the silhouette. Make sure the body shape is always nipped at the waist. Following the same concept of tops, just make sure the sweaters are lightweight knits. For pants and jeans, mid-rise works best. The waistline needs to be shaped inwards from the hip. Angle up pockets from side works best. For jackets, make sure it's nipped at the waist or belted. The same rule applies for coats. For dresses, make sure it's nipped at the waist with a well-balanced portion from bust to hips. Here are some designers who primarily design around the silhouette. Following this chart, we're going to talk about the cello shape next. The cello shape is sister to the hourglass shape. Here are the key features of the cello shape. This is a curvier full figure hourglass with fleshier bust and hips. Well-defined curvier nipped and waistline. The proportion is short-waisted and short torso. The hips are rounder with a generous behind. Thicker thighs tapering downwards. Typically, you gain the weight the same way as the hourglass. Going with the category of tops, here are two key designs to look out for. Notice the emphasis on the waist and slightly higher open neckline. These are examples that work best for fleshier arms. Here are the design details accentuating the voluptuous shape of the body. For sweaters, make sure it's a lightweight knit with these design elements. For pants and jeans, low rise to mid rise work best. The waistline needs to be curved inwards from the hip. Make sure it's roomy around the hips to stop whiskering from the crotch area so you don't get camel toes. For jackets, the design detail should be focused on the shorter waist with it being either cropped or with a curvier waistline. For coats, it should be belted or cut with a fit and flare silhouette. Lastly, for dresses, make sure it's curved in at the waist with generous coverage for the bust and it's roomy for the hips and bottom. Here are some designers who primarily design around the silhouette. Do you see it? We're moving on to the goblet shape. Here are the key features of the goblet. Broad wide shoulders and back with heavy set chest, long torso with slightly nipped in ampere waist. The smallest part is the underbust. Long torso, short hips. Small round bottom with slightly flare hips. Slim long legs, typically weight gain is around the bust and tummy. Go in the category of tops, here's two key design elements to look out for. Notice the top highlights the smallest part of the upper body. The neckline needs to offset the wide shoulders. Do not put any embellishment onto the shoulders. Here's some examples of necklines to offset wide shoulders. Here's some sleeve details to offset the wide shoulders. On the same concept with tops, make sure the sweaters are light to medium weight knits. Pants and jeans, low to mid-rise work best for long torso and short hips. The inseam should be long, the waistline should only be slightly tapered. Jackets make sure it's fitted across the shoulders, roomy for heavy bust and wide back, with nipped in waist and flare below the waist to balance off the wide shoulders and back. Coats make sure the bottom is flare to balance the top. Longer coats work great for long legs. For dresses, make sure to accentuate the ampere waist and the bottom is flare to offset the wide top. Here are some designers who primarily use the silhouettes. 
As you can see, skill fashion designers are using the system to design around a body type. When it comes to the apple shape, here are the key features of the apple. Rounder, wider shoulder line, either fleshier or big bone, average to big bust, rib cage and back appear to be somewhat wide, fullness around the midsection, little to undefined waistline, flattish bottom, narrow hips, modest limbs and legs, weight gain tends to be around the torso and tummy area. Going with the category of tops, here are two key design features to look out for. The emphasis should be around creating a waistline above the natural waist. Elongate the neckline by opening it up. Here's some examples of neckline to offset the thick midsection. These are sleeve design details for the shape. These cuts work to offset the midsection. Here are things to look out for in sweaters. For pants and jeans, low to mid-rise work best for short torsos and full hips. Do not wear tapered legs, nipped waist, or high rise. It'll give you a muffin top or a pooch. For jackets, straight or flowy cuts to offset the midsection. For coats, straight or A-line cuts at the knee work best. Create a waistline above the natural waist. For dresses, make sure to create a waistline above the natural waist. Here's some designers who design around this shape. This is the most difficult body shape to design around because it goes against everything that's the hourglass which is held as ideal. What comes to the brick shape? Here are the key features of the brick. Broad shoulder line and straight rib cage. Lack of curves throughout the body frame. Bust and hips are approximately the same width. Very little to no waist definition. Straight hips and flattish bottom. Thick thighs and calves which can lead to square muscular looking legs. Weight gain typically is distributed evenly throughout the body. This is why I disagree with a lot of styling tips for the shape from a designer's perspective. Because there's no waist definition, you need to dress for this body shape and not try to contort it to an hourglass. As such, you need to create curves from linear lines. Going with the category of tops, here are some key design details to look out for. The emphasis should be creating curves from this linear shape. Open necklines to create curves. Here's some examples of necklines to create curves. These are some sleeve details for the shape. These cuts work to create curves. Here's some stuff to look out for in sweaters. Pants and jeans, mid-rise work best. Flare leg openings to create curves. For jackets, these work best as they have defined shapes to them. They do not need to be nipped at the waist. For coats, find ones that can create shape. They do not need waist definition. For dresses, go with embellished designs to create curves. Here are some designers who design around this shape. As you can see, this shape is often softened to give it more of a feminine feel. Here are the key features of the column, straight narrow shoulder line and rib cage. Slender, elongated neckline, small bust, small cup size. Straight from bust to hips, very little to no waist definition, long waisted, long torso. Slim hips and small bottom. Lack of curves throughout the body frame. Weight gain is typically distributed evenly throughout the body. This is the tall slender sister silhouette to the brick. Going with the category of tops, here are the key design details to look out for. The emphasis should be building up linear shape with architectural and seaming details. Here are examples of necklines to showcase a slender long neckline. For sweaters, texture and heavy knits build up definition for this lean linear silhouette. For pants and jeans, mid to high rises work best for long torso and waist. Make sure the waist is not nipped in. Show off those long legs. For jackets, build up those slender shoulders and play up the lean lines with structural details. For coats, lean into the long linear shape by going full length. For dresses, go knee to floor length with closed neckline and structured sleeves. Here are some designers who design around the shape. It is the assumption that all models have the same body shape, but as you can see if you're following this series, it's not true. Wear the top heavy portion of the shapes, the lollipop. While it's assumed many people desire this silhouette, not many high-end fashion designers use the silhouette as the synthesis of the fashion model for being too top heavy with very slender legs. Here are the key features of the lollipop. Shoulders are noticed to be wider than the hips. Shoulder may be straight, square, or very strong looking. Bust can range from small to big. Little to no waist definition, short waisted, long torso. Hips look straight compared to the broad shoulders. The bottom is small with long slender legs. Weight gain is usually even from the shoulders down to the hips, with very little weight gain through the limbs. Going with the category of tops, here are some key design features to look out for. The emphasis should be de-emphasizing the shoulders and lengthen the short waist. Here are some examples of necklines to narrow the shoulders. The sleeve should fit throughout the bicep with the focal point at the sleeve opening. Here are some examples of tops to emphasizing the broad shoulders. For sweaters, go with light to medium weight. Shift focus away from broad shoulders and busts. 
For pants and jeans, mid to high rise work best for short waist, long torso. Make sure it's not nipped at the waist. Flare leg opening to balance the wide shoulders. For jackets, go with below the waist to hip length to narrow the broad shoulders and elongate the short waist. Shift focus to the waist and sleeve opening. For coats, go with A-line shape to narrow the shoulders and midi to full length. For dresses, go with fitted tops to fuller bottom ratio. Here are some designers who design around this shape. This silhouette is used primarily in bridal. The next top heavy shape is the cornet. This is an athletic body shape. Here are the key features of the cornet. Very broad shoulders tapering down to slender hips, straight wide shoulders, small full bust, little to no waist definition, long waisted, hips are narrower than shoulders and bust line, bottom is round, muscular arms and legs, weight gain is typically distributed evenly throughout the body. Going with the category of tops, here are some key design features to look out for. The emphasis should be the emphasizing the broad shoulders and give the shape a more of a feminine flair. Here are some examples of necklines to draw attention to the clavicles and away from the shoulders. On the sleeve, it should be fitted through the bicep only. These are some examples of tops to draw attention to the waist and not the shoulders. For sweaters, go with a light to medium weight. Shift focus to the neck and waist. For pants and jeans, mid-rise works best. Make sure that the waist is not nipped in. Slim to slight flare legs work best for toned legs. For jackets, go with hip length with focus at the waist. For coats, go with A-line shape and below the knee. For dresses, A-line with waist seam work best. Here are some designers who design around this shape. With this silhouette, I often associate it with swimmers and runners. We finally come to the bottom heavy portion of the silhouettes. A large portion of people fall under one of these four silhouettes. Okay, let's start with the skittle shape. Here are the key features of the skittle. Long slender upper body with narrow soft shoulders. Average size full bust. Dip the waist, natural waist, slim belly. Flare our hips from the waist. Full round bottom, hips and thighs are wider than the shoulders. Long legs with thick thighs and chunky calves. Weight gain is typically around the hips and thighs. Going with the category of tops, here's some key design features to look out for. Shift the focus with open necklines and broaden the shoulder line. Here's some examples of necklines to draw attention to the neck and the shoulders. On the sleeves, play up the shoulders. Here are some examples of what to look out for in tops. For sweaters, go with medium to heavyweight knits. Draw attention to the neckline and shoulders. For pants and jeans, go with mid to high rises. The waistline should be curvy and nipped in. Make sure that the fit is not skin tight. For jackets, focus on the collar and shoulder details. Make sure it isn't fitted. For coats, go with an A-line shape with either big collar or upper body detail to draw the focus upwards. For dresses, go with sleeve details or an open neckline. Here's some designers who design around this shape. As you can see, a lot of people thought to be hourglass are mistakenly categorized. Again, there are not that many people who are actual hourglass. Let's move on to the next shape, the pear shape. This is the most mischaracterized shape. I don't know if anyone has seen the pear. Tell me where you see a nipped in waist. Here are the key features of the pear. Slender top with narrow sloped shoulders, arms are neither thick or slim. Full bust, little to no waist definition, short waist, long torso. Round belly, thick hips through to the calves, very full bottom, short fleshy legs. Weight gain is typically at the belly, bottom, and hips down to the calves. Going with the category of tops, here are some key design features to look out for. Try to add volume to the top with 3D detail and widen the shoulders. Here's some examples of necklines to draw attention to the top. On the sleeve, build volume to the shoulders. These are some examples of tops to draw attention upwards away from the hips. For sweaters, go with a medium to chunky weight, shift focus upward or add volume to shoulders. For pants and jeans, go with mid to high rise, make sure the waist is curvy with room for hip and bottom. Be mindful of the inseam. For jackets, find cuts to add volume to the top or details to draw attention upwards. For coats, go with an A-line shape or upper body detail to draw focus up. For dresses, go with fit and flare with open neckline or shoulder detail. Here's some brands who design around this curvy shape. I hope this clarifies the confusion in the fruit shapes, as some of you call it. Here are the key features of the vase. Slender round shoulders, large full bust, thick arms, soft curvy waist definition, long waist and torso, hips are full like bust, bottom is round, thick thighs, tapers down to calves, short legs. Weight typically is gained evenly throughout the body. Going with the category of tops, here are some key design features to look out for. Open neckline and fitted waist to accent the curves. Here are examples of open necklines. 
Here are some examples of what to look out for on sleeves. For sweaters, go with a light to medium weight. Bring focus to neck and shoulders. For pants and jeans, go with mid to high rise. Make sure the waist is curvy with room for hip and bottom. Check the inseam. For jackets, go with mid to full length with focus at the waist. For coats, focus on waist definition and it should hit below the knee. For dresses, make sure to define the waist the length should be knee or below the knee. There are some designers who design around this shape. This is another silhouette that's often mistaken for the hourglass. However, this silhouette is more Rubenesque. We finish with the belt. This silhouette is often curvy and full figure. Here are the key features of the belt. Small round shoulders, small full bust, slim arms, little to no waist definition, short waisted, very wide hips, very full round bottom, thick thighs tapering down to slender legs. Weight gain is typically around the hips, bottom, and thighs. Going with the category of tops, here are some key design features to look out for. Closed necklines and fit around the body. Here are some examples of closed necklines. For sleeves, keep it slim and not overpowering. These are examples of tops that you should look out for in the belt. For sweaters, go with medium to chunky weight. Contrast the proportion to knit weight. For pants and jeans, go with mid to high rise. Make sure the waist is very curvy with flared out legs. For jackets, go with closed necklines and the length should be hitting just above the hips. For coats, go with a closed neckline and an A-line shape but create waist definition. For dresses, make sure it's fitted around the waist with focus on the neckline and shoulders. Here are some designers who design around the silhouette. To finish with the belt, this silhouette is often curvy and full figure. This wraps up the first part of the Silhouettes and Kibi series. Here's some bonus information on how to determine your silhouette. Take your measurements from these four points, the shoulders, the bust, the waist, and the hips. Use this chart to find out which main shape you are. If you want to find out your body shape, here are two websites that can help you determine your body silhouette. Use the key features from the video to determine which silhouette you are. So this is part one of two videos. This is just the silhouettes, you know, which designers use. And the second part of the Kibi is the one that you guys are waiting for. So look at the link below for the second video. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful. Leave a comment below. If you have any questions, follow and subscribe for more. Bye.